Once again, this is Pastor A.K. Barham, and I'm a part Missionary Baptist Church family, and we want to welcome you into our celebration, a high time this Sunday morning, to give you some inspiration that will help you along this on your way through this day. And so come on in and praise with us and sing with us. Enjoy uh, lifting up the name of Jesus alongside of us. And so we want to just continue to encourage you. We want you to let you know that we're praying for you, and we thank you for joining in and tuning in with us as we bless the Lord. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. God bless you. The reason I go, the reason I 
because he had a dynamic prayer life. He would tell you that God is able to close the lion's mouth. And no matter how crazy things may get in your life, no matter how you may be feeling like you're in a, in a bad situation and the lion's in a life look like you're in a, in a valley, but how many know that God will step in that thing and rearrange it for your, his glory and for your greater? And so when Daniel came out, he gained a promotion. But you got to go through some things every now and then. If you want God to promote you, you got to stand strong for God. And Daniel will tell you that he will get you through it. Parham, can I call on myself as a witness? Should have been dead, could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But God stepped in and made on death behave. He turned my test into a testimony. And I'm here to tell you that God can get you through it. I hope I hold you long, but as we walk through the text, I want to pull out a few pointers here. It says, yay, go I walk. Point number one, I want you to understand, you got to walk. We got to walk. You got to start walking. Well, Pastor, you part him. Uh, they done told us to stay at home. They told us no so it's social distancing. We can't go where we want to go. We can't come to church. And how do I understand? Your walk got to first start at home with God. Learn how to walk with God no matter where you are. Walk around your house talking to God. Big Mom used to tell me, just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. And so when you walk with him, walk in his word. Walk with him in your prayer life. Walk with him within your spirit. The old people used to say, old folk used to say a long time ago, back in the old church, just a closer walk with thee. And how many of you want a closer walk with thee? God, I want a closer walk with God. Lord, walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Well, my, no matter how hard it may get, no matter how crazy it may seem in your life, you have to keep going. No matter how crazy the valley may look, maybe you look like you can't find your way out of it because in a valley situation, sometimes the mountains look mighty tall and, and also the valley look mighty far and it looks like you're down on your last call. But when you're down on your last call, nowhere else you can go is but up. So we got to trust God for the ups in your life. So you can't give up in the valley. You can't throw in a towel. You can't sit down in the valley on God. You got to keep on going. So you got to take give up now. I can't turn around now. I come too far. And so how many know that God will bring you through? You got to learn how to walk with him. The Bible says, he didn't walk with God too, too, so long that he will not. You can walk with God. Tell them all your problems and tell them all your situation. God is there. He is a burning barrel. And so, as I get you I walk to. First, I got to start walking with God. And walking in relationship and fellowship with my creator and my maker. And then, secondly, as I get you I walk through the valley to understand the willingness. Many times, we mess up because we are not willing. God is always ready, but we are not always willing. And how many know that in order for you to make it through any valley that you're facing in life, and even in this valley of COVID-19, you got to say yes, Lord, to your will. Yes to your way. You got to have a humble spirit. And yes, even part of yes, I, I get fearful sometimes. And, but yet, even though I get fearful, I still remain faithful. And that's what we have to do as men and women of God. We got to stay faithful to God. And how many understand that God will give you courage and keep you in courage while you're going through your valley, in the midst of your valley experience, in the midst of the dark times and the heartaches and the COVID-19 and the, 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 all the other things that you may be facing in your life. God will keep you in courage, with courage, through your valley. But you got to be willing to walk with him. Stand fast. Like a tree planted by the river of water that shall not be moved. And the Bible says we gotta learn how to be faithful even unto death. Are you willing? If you're willing, if you're willing, God is able to walk you through the valid experience that you have, whether it be in debt, whether it be a bad relationship, maybe your children are not acting right, no matter what it is, maybe you're having a hard time, even with church members, and sometimes you're having a hard time with your supervisor on your job, but God will get in that valley with you and take you through this thing. But yet you have to be willing to say, not my 
my way, but your way, Lord. Yes. Willingness of God. Yeah, you gotta walk. That means you gotta be willing. You gotta have a walk, but you gotta be willing. Through the valley of the shadow of death. And you gotta understand that if you walk into anything with God, some treacherous times in life, you're gonna have some woes. If you don't walk it, yet you have willing, but you gotta understand it don't exempt you from having some woes in your life. That means some grief and calamity will happen to you in the valley. And how to understand that it rains on the just as well as on the, I don't care how saved and sanctified you may feel. Right. And you may be, all of us gotta go through something in this life. Yes, Lord. Say, well, Pastor, I've been giving my time, I've been a prayer warrior, but yet, until you put to the test, your faith cannot increase with God. All right. And so I understand, you can't let you can't be fooled or bamboozled and think you're never gonna go in and do anything. You're never gonna encounter something. In this life, you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But you gotta understand that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. But I thank God that we gotta come bring in the midst of it all. And that's why we walk in with God, relationship with God. But preacher, I lost some love. What have you say to that? Well, I lost some loved ones. I even got COVID-19. Preach, I got you. And what you gonna tell me about walking through the valley when this valley is hard and it's dark and I can't see no way out? Can I call on some more witnesses? Peter was a follower of Christ. Big mouth Peter. He was, he was right there with Jesus. But history says he was crucified upside down. He understood he had a better. Stephen, as he was ministering to the one that had stone in the hand, stoned him to death in the midst of his family experience. John the Baptist, who baptized Jesus, was beheaded. So that you will have some balance. Paul, he, he, he wrote most of the New Testament. Paul, powerful man of God, transformed by the hand of God in his life, was in prison, and then history says he was beheaded. And then we have John, the revelator, who was banished. Y'all know John. Many of us reading it now. Book of Revelation trying to figure this thing out, what is going on in this world. But John, faithful John, was banished to the Isle of Padma. Sometimes when you serve in God, you will have some valid experience, but you gotta trust God even in the midst of the shadow of death. Remember my dad one time had some struggles. When he had cancer, and I went to see him in his last uh, few days on this earth. And one thing he told me, he said, son, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to die. I'm like everybody else. I don't want to die. I feel myself getting weak. I don't want to die. But I've been preaching about heaven for over 20 years. And now it's time for me to believe, to receive what I've been preaching. As so all of us in here, we've been talking about heaven. No matter what God, whatever state you may in, if God calls you home today, you got to be ready. You got to know that God has a prepared place for prepared people waiting on each and every one of us. And so we got to believe it. Trust God. No matter what, if your family member been lost, you got to understand that God, and if they had a relationship with God, he they're safe in the arms of God. He's able. Matter of fact, I like it. Paul in 1 Corinthians 4 and 10, he says, we are fools for Christ's sake. He's a fool for serving Christ. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong, able, but we are despised. He was considered fool for giving their life for Christ. And sometimes people don't think you crazy. But I, I, if I'm going to be a fool for anybody, I'm going to be a fool for the Lord. And so all of us got some valid experience. Some of the God's greatest vessels that we can read about now had their valid experience. And some of them tasted death because they were serving God. And I understand that in this valley, God's going to be with you every step of the way. He'll be with you even in death. Can nothing separate you from the love that is in Christ.
Christ Jesus. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool for the Lord. So here you know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because I believe that God is with me. He's there with me. And I can walk through this with God. People may say you're crazy. You done lost your mind. You talk about you can walk with it with God. I'm going to walk with it with God. Whether in my home or whether to my job. And then that's a time that I had to put some prayer. Touch and agree with my family. As I walk out the door to go into the prison system. And minister to men that are incarcerated. Because they need God in the midst of this situation. All of us need Jesus. And so yeah, I would like to stay at home with everybody else. But my, my, my God has called me to do something greater in his life. All right. And so I walk into my grave. Yeah, you all walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Something wonderful. So I see it in the scripture. Not only do I have a walk with him, you got to be willing. And you got to understand, you know, some walls don't come in your life. No matter who you are, whether you say it or unsaid, you have some walls. And all of us going through some old right here and right now. But I thank God today that something is wonderful about it. When you walk with God, hey, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall feel no evil. Because I got God is encouraging me. Why should I feel no evil? Because thou are with me. That's a wonderful thing to know that God is with you. And when God is with you, you can see some marvelous stuff when you walk with God. You can see some miracles take place in your life. God will bring some things to pass you and never thought that it come. Every door that closed when you walk with God, he will open up every time somebody said you weren't going to make it. When God, how do you understand, you can make it because God specializes in missions that are impossible. God is able. And so we keep on trusting and walking with him. God is wonderful. So when you walk with God, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What makes it so wonderful that because God is with me. And then as I get ready to close, now all you understand is you got to have a walk with God in the midst of this COVID-19 or whatever you face in your life, whatever valley, if you're making through this, you got to have a walk with God. You got to be willing to praise God and give God his glory no matter what he is. You got to understand that some walls going to come. Some things going to come into your life that's going to shake the depths of your faith. But yeah, you got to understand that it's a wonderful experience to have God on your side. And then y'all said, number five, is when I'm walking through this same thing, when I'm going through this valley of the shadow of death, then I already have come out on the other side. Even while I'm still there, I can see my way out of it. Because number five, when I look at the scripture, it lets me know that it's worn. Now, how many understand the battle is already worn? All right. All you got to do is just step into your destiny, step into your future. God is already won the battle. All you got to do is just keep on moving and trusting God. Walk by faith and not by sight because winning is gaining. And winning is gaining everything that God has promised for your life. And yet, how many understand that God has some great things waiting on you in store for your life? So keep holding on, keep walking on, keep on praising, keep on worshiping. And I understand that God is there. He'll make a way out of nowhere. He'll be your bridge over trouble water, even in the midst of your valley experience. God has slowed us down to spend more time with Him. And so at the end of the day, He lets you know in His Word that the battle is already won. All right. You have the victory in God and through Christ Jesus. So that's how you're going to make it through this valley. Continue to keep your eyes on God. Look to the hands. So it's coming, your help going, all of your help. It comes from the Lord. And then I get ready to leave. My feet are where it is. Uh, my feet are where it is. My feet are it is. My feet are where it is. It encourages me that because God can bring me through it. When I say that it's already born on the other side. You gotta have it. It's already won while you're in the midst of your battle. Because if God has brought you to it, He showed up and He loved to bring you through it. All right. And so when I look away, I see the ladies, Zane and I, that I let me know that you have to be intentional with this thing with God. All 
right. Does that mean that you're going to have God to bring you through it? You got to come through it praising God. You got to come through it worshiping our maker and our creator. You got to come through it with a prayer life praying in the name of Jesus. And how do you know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue it shall confess. You got to come through it intentionally by giving God all the glory. How can you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side? You would have made it this far today. But I thank God that he never left me. And he never sent me. He's right there with me. He said, Lord, I'll be with you. Even until the end of the word. And so I, I thank God today. Because when I look at the word, I understand no matter whatever it is that he can bring me to one side to the other side of it. When I look at the word, I see the end. There is a tear. The tear lets me know that he's already has brought you through. That he's already brought you through. He's already brought my family through this. He's already has brought you through this. And he's able. And sometimes things get hard. And you lose sight of God. But you got to refocus and say, God, here I am. I need you right here and right now. And how many know that when you call on the Lord, he'll come and see about you. He'll bring you through it. He's going to bring us through this thing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. The Bible says, the Lord is my servant and I shall and he making me uh, to lie down uh, in green pastures. Uh, and he lead me uh, beside me uh, to still waters. Uh, he restored uh, my soul. Uh, and he lead me uh, in the path of righteousness. Uh, for his uh, name's sake. Yeah. Yeah. Though I walk uh, through the land uh, of the shadow of uh, chapter 11 is, is give us the, uh, the road to salvation. Read and study it. Pray to God. Turn your life over. Give him your heart. Confess and take him uh, as your Lord and personal Savior. Uh, he's able to get you through this matter. 
That's how you're going to make it through this. It's through the power of the love of Jesus. So on, keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Get tired? You feel like doing the towel? Don't give up. Don't quit. But keep on walking. God will get us through this. But you need him as your personal savior. Maybe you've been left away from the church because you've been hurt in the house of God. But come on back to the house. It's, it's shelter, it's love in the house. God is there. He's with you. Get back with your church. Unite. Get in fellowship. God is going to one day come get his people that is connected to the house. Be in right standing. Work while it's still day. Give God your all. God bless you. Let me say a quick prayer. Father, for those that are lost loved ones, those that are struggling, for those that are hurting, we ask God that you'll put your hand of protection over their life. Father, God, Father, we pray, God, that you'll urge them through this terrible situation that we're in. We pray, God, for those that have been in tragic circumstances. We pray, God, that you'll give them comfort in their heart and their mind. We know that you're a comforter. We, God, we ask you, God, for those that are sick and ill, that is contracted or being connected uh, with this COVID-19. Let them know you're a healer, that you're still a doctor that has never lost a patient. And God, that you are uh, on their side. Whisper to the one in the hospitals. Whisper to the one that are in the nursing home. Speak to the one that are in the prison system. Speak to the one that are, the ones that are confined in their, their houses, God. Speak to their lives, God. Let them know that you're still there. That you're still on the throne. And we love you, God. And we know that you love us. So we give you all the glory. And all the praise. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every church across this country. And especially, God, I pray for the members of Iron Apart. No matter where they are. Let them know that, God, they're prayed for and they're loved. For this we understand, God that you have it all in your hands. So we thank you and we love you and we rest on your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I get ready to close. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest on the body and forth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray.